What is going on, y'all? It is the Caveman back at it again with another video. Here comes the off-season content, people. Now we gotta start becoming creative. The news isn't gonna be pouring in right in front of us, and I got the ways to be creative. Don't you worry. Today, I wanted to talk about the most underrated player on every team in the AFC, and then I'll do the NFC in a separate video. But before we get into that, you guys know the drill around here. Mott's applesauce. If you're ever hungry, thirsty, whatever it might be, Mott's applesauce will satisfy whatever said if I need to with the k man guarantee I promise it will never fail you who is your favorite team's most underrated player all right so this is pretty damn simple I'm just gonna go through every team in the AFC and tell you who I think the most underrated player is and why I'm gonna do this from the public's perception standpoint I understand if you're like inside the fan base you're a fan of that team you might slightly disagree because you know a little bit more about that team but we're just talking from the outside looking in and we're gonna start with the first team in the AFC East being my Buffalo Bills. This choice was easy. It's 100% Harrison Phillips. He's becoming a household name here in Buffalo, but as far as the rest of the NFL goes, I'm not sure if many people know his name. He came in eighth this season for defensive tackles when it comes to run stop win percentage, and he certainly came along. He's a very nice complimentary piece next to Ed Oliver, which Ed Oliver needed desperately, and I think Harrison Phillips played that role relatively well. We're going to move with the Dolphins next, and my selection for their most underrated player is definitely going to be defensive event Emmanuel Ogba. The season veteran is coming off the second consecutive nine sack season and a career high 12 passes defended at the position. He had a very good year. When talking about players on the Miami Dolphins that certainly made an impact, you don't hear his name often. You hear Xavier Howard, Javon Holland, Christian Wilkins, Jalen Waddle, Mike Gusecki, etc, etc. But I feel like Emmanuel Ogba's name is not said enough and for those statistics to be had this season, I certainly think he deserves some recognition. Now for the Patriots, you certainly could have taken a couple different guys here and it was a tough decision. Decision, but I eventually came to the conclusion that offensive lineman Michael Enwenu was certainly my decision, and let me tell you why. There are a lot of offensive linemen that get recognition over in New England, like David Andrews, Shaq Mason, Trent Brown, but you never hear Michael Enwenu's name. He wasn't a solidified starter on a week-to-week -week basis, but this guy came up big when he absolutely needed to, and other guys went down with injuries. He was so versatile. He played left guard and right tackle, over 200 snaps at each position, and he only allowed 11 pressures. This guy really filled holes when they needed it most. As for the final team in the AFC East, we have the New York Jets, and I selected cornerback Bryce Hall as their most underrated player. The fifth-round selection back in 2020 played over 80% of defensive snaps for the New York Jets, and for players that played at least 80% of defensive snaps, he was the top tackling cornerback, and he also came second in passes defended for cornerbacks that played over 80% of snaps. So he made as much of a difference as he possibly could for the New York Jets secondary. Let's move into the AFC North, and we're going to start with the Baltimore Ravens, and I'm going to select quarterback Lamar Jackson as their most underrated player. I know it sounds stupid, but let me explain for a second here. This was probably Lamar's worst statistical year to date. He dealt with a ton of injuries. He threw a lot of interceptions. It certainly wasn't his best showing, but if you watch the film, some of his best games, he made a ton of crazy throws that the old Lamar Jackson would never have made or even attempted. He would have just ran. He really matured as a passer in a lot of games that I watched him in, and I really thought he took some steps forward in a positive direction. And people aren't realizing that, and that is why I am taking Lamar as my most underrated player for the Baltimore Ravens. Moving into the Super Bowl runner-ups, the Cincinnati Bengals. My selection here is going to be cornerback. Don't let me butcher it. Chinabe Awuzie. He came in free agency from the Dallas Cowboys, and he was the definition of consistency for them in the back end. You talk about guys that made a difference for the Bengals. You hear any receivers named Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins. You hear Joe Burrow. You hear Joe Mixon. You have Mike Hilton. You hear Jesse Bates. But you never hear Chinabe Awuzie. Awuzie was the eighth top targeted cornerback this season, yet he only gave up the 19th most receptions. That's pretty damn good. It's not amazing, but it certainly deserves some recognition. I know a lot of other guys get it. I wanted to give some recognition to a player that that I thought had a relatively decent season. Staying with the same color scheme, we have the Cleveland Browns. This was extremely difficult because there really is nobody underrated on the Browns. Everybody gets a lot of recognition, and this year they just fell extremely short. But I decided to go with tight end David Njoku. He's a pass catcher with physical tools that I really think could be utilized a lot better with a quarterback that isn't named Baker Mayfield. So I do think he's hampered down. Therefore, I would call him underrated. For the last team in the AFC North, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers. And my selection here was extremely easy. I went with defensive and Alex 
Ty Smith. There are a ton of big names in Pittsburgh, but Alex Ty Smith really isn't getting the recognition he deserved, especially for the season he just had. Playing alongside the likes of TJ Watt and Cameron Hayward is certainly extremely helpful, but Alex Ty Smith did a lot in his own right. He was the eighth best defensive end in the entire NFL when it came to run stop win percentage, not to mention he had six sacks on the year. So he was really that third piece of that defensive front and did a lot of game wrecking and he was extremely versatile in the process. Getting into the AFC South, starting with the Houston Texans, my selection for most underrated player here is going to be quarterback Davis Mills. Yes, Davis Mills. He had a silently decent season once the year progressed. If you looked at all of his starts and removed his worst one, which was against the Buffalo Bills in his second career start ever, Davis Mills in 10 starts had 2,426 passing yards for 15 touchdowns and 5 interceptions. Not too shabby for a kid that got thrown into an absolute dumpster fire when he wasn't intended to be. Next up, we got the Indianapolis Colts, and my selection here is going to be Jonathan Taylor. Now, but seriously, my selection for the Indianapolis Colts is going to be defensive end, rookie defensive end out of Michigan, Quiddy Pay. He was actually my selection to be rookie of the year, and he didn't start off too hot. But near the end of the season, he really started to ramp things up, and I feel like if he would have played at that level that he was playing at near the end of the year, he could have been, you know, potentially contested. Micah Parson for that award. He was that good. Finishing the year with five sacks, I really expect Quiddy Pay to take one of the biggest leaps out of that draft class. So he's going to be my most underrated player for the Indianapolis Colts. Getting into the Jacksonville Jaguars now, this was relatively difficult because if you know the player on the Jags, that means they're probably pretty decent and not underrated. Otherwise, everyone else probably isn't great. So I went with wide receiver Laquan Treadwell, the highly touted first round pick back in 2016. Did not have a great start to his career, but he kind of found a wide receiver one role later on in the year with the Jacksonville Jaguars. In games that he played over 50% of snaps, Laquan Treadwell averaged four receptions for 52 yards. Nothing crazy by any stretch of the imagination. I'm not trying to argue that, but for a guy that was relatively buried on this depth chart to work its way up to that uh, top wide receiver role later on in the year, I would say he had a pretty decent season. For the final team in the AFC South, we have the Tennessee Titans. Lots of big names in Tennessee, but this is obviously an underrated list, so I'm going to take defensive end to Nico Autry. That pass rush for the Tennessee Titans was really the saving grace for that entire team, but he really did not get enough recognition. Everybody talks about Jeffrey Simmons, Harold Landry, Bud Dupree, but Nico Autry, the season vet, had nine sacks this season, six passes defended. He was certainly a huge part of it, and I think he deserves some recognition, too. Getting into our last division, we have the AFC West, starting with the Denver Broncos, and I'm going to take another quarterback here. It's going to be Drew Locke. I thought for sure this kid should have been the starter for the Denver Broncos, and I I think their ceiling would have been much higher this year, but instead, they were extremely mediocre because they rolled with Teddy Bridgewater. Drew Locke might have went 0-3 in his three starts at the end of the season, but he didn't play bad by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, he threw for 560 yards, one touchdown and zero interceptions, nothing crazy. Also had two rushing touchdowns on top of it. But he was also a pretty big part of the Broncos nearly beating the Chiefs at the tail end of the season. He had those two rushing touchdowns in that game. He showed some promise. I think he got ripped off this year to show off what he really can do. And and now the Broncos are left wondering what in God's name do they have with Drew Locke. So screw them. They messed up. I think Drew Locke's extremely underrated. Moving on, we got the AFC runner-ups, the Kansas City Chiefs. And this choice was so easy for me. Running back Jarek McKinnon. If you know me at all, if you've been following my content for a little bit of time now, you would know that I really, really love Jarek McKinnon. Even before he got to the Chiefs and started playing, I've loved this guy for a very long time. And I think if he was just able to stay on the field, he would be the difference maker that he was in the postseason for the Kansas City Chiefs. He only started three games this year. And that was in the three games in the postseason, right? In those three games, he rushed for 150 yards. He had 14 receptions, 165 yards through the air, and a reception touchdown. This dude brought a dimension to that backfield that they didn't have before, and he certainly was a difference maker. He was the best running back that they had all year. Reaching the tail end of the video here, my selection for the Las Vegas Raiders is going to be left tackle Colton Miller. And before I did research on this, I honest to God really hadn't heard his name before. And for an offensive line that really didn't have a great year, this kid in particular had a fantastic season. Colton was the sixth best offensive tackle when it came to pass block win rate and for a team that was often playing from behind you had to throw a lot and Derek Carr had a lot of pressure on his back you need a trusty left tackle like Colton Miller to help you out and I certainly think he was that guy. And finally on the last team of the entire video for the AFC we have the Los Angeles Chargers and I gotta be honest I really had no idea who to choose here I guess you could have went with Josh Palm or maybe Jalen Guyton. I ended up going with rookie cornerback Asante Samuel Jr. He missed some time this year, but I thought he was relatively decent. He had two interceptions on the year, and I think like Quiddy Pay, he's going to be one of those second-year guys that really takes a massive jump. So that's
that's who I ended up choosing here. But yeah, those are my underrated players for every team in the AFC. I'm going to do it for the NFC as well. Let me know what you thought of my picks down in the comment section below. As always, if you enjoyed the video, and I hope you did, please like, subscribe, do all the fun stuff. If you want to hit the bell to be notified when I upload, I'd appreciate that. I'm going to go over to Twitter, follow me over there. I'd appreciate that as well. I have a TikTok down in the description that I think you should check out, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you.